Michelle Cullen. This is week two of Astronomy 104. And this week, we begin to explore the scales of the universe. We're going on a journey through time and space this week. Well, the universe is big, really big. And atoms and their building blocks are small, very small. I love astronomy as no other science stretches your mind to cover these types of distances from nanometers to light years. There is a broad range of units and scales on a visit to the Homestead Gold Mine in South Dakota. We're at the Sanford Mine. It's a retired mine that was a very productive gold mine, but we're learning about how there's been turned into a research facility for dark matter. They've got neutrino experiments going on under um, a mile underground and um, there's universities from all over the world that are coming here to look at dark matter and dark energy. These particles are so small that the tiny electron that's part of an atom is thought to be more than 500,000 times more massive than a tiny neutral neutrino. It's infinitesimally wow. small. Neutrinos are just so small that their particles are streaming through the earth and through your very body this minute. Here in South Dakota, the very large and the very small are intimately related. In order to study astronomy, we need a sense of these vast scales so that we're all on the same page. This week, as you delve into the learning objectives in Blackboard Week 2, the need for more than one measuring system and unit of systems will be obvious. On Earth, most objects are measured in the metric and metric variations, but we need to look at hundreds and millions of meters and kilometers for distance. It gets to be a little bit awkward. That's why we use the term astronomical unit, or AU. Beyond the solar system, again, astronomical units will need so many of those that it just becomes awkward again to use those for distances to the next star. So we're going to use the term light year. By the end of this mini lecture, I want you to be comfortable with some of the basic units of astronomy. One thing that I really appreciate about astronomy is that there's simple and direct names that are given to objects. In astronomy, we have terms like a black hole pulsar, light year, but even though the names are simple, they're often literal and descriptive, you still might not have the exact concept down. So make sure you just keep track of it, write it down, it will really help you on the quiz. And remember, that's going to be part one of your reflective journal vocabulary, and you'll need to come up with five words each week that you don't know. Now I don't assign these words to you because I don't know what you don't know. Uh, and you'll have to look up the definition and put that in. You can cut and paste that uh, from the Astronomy Dictionary by Oxford. It has an Astronomy Dictionary or just Google it. So let's take a deeper look into the units of astronomy. Most of you are familiar with the metric system and scientific notation. They're the standard for science. Uh, very big numbers and very small numbers can be written very easily very simply 10 to the blank power where blank is a number of zeros following the 10 so 1 is 10 to the 0 power 10 is 10 is 10 to the 1 power and 100 is 10 to the 2 power a million we just add it 6 power so that means that we have a 10 with 6 zeros after it billion has 9 zeros and trillion has 12 zeros so the same way we can look at small numbers, less than 1, and we use those with 10 to the negative exponent. You'll recall that 1 thousandths, 0 0.001, is 10 to the minus 3. The OpenStax text has a great explanation if you're not confident on reading and interpreting scientific notation. You can refer to the appendix at the end of the OpenStax astronomy as well for a refresher on the metric notations. You should be comfortable with deca for 10, centi for 100, kilo for 1,000. And on Earth, we'll measure these distances with meters, and we often use those prefixes. Like, when we get beyond Earth, 
a kilometer is awkward. We could say that the average distance to the moon is 380,000 kilometers, and that's not too bad, but the moon is fairly nearby. The average distance to the sun is approximately, well, pretty close to 149,597,870 kilometers, which we can conveniently round off to 150 million kilometers. So the sun's pretty far away if we use kilometers. It's a fairly large number. It's easier to deal with those numbers in scientific notation, so we can write that down as 1.5 times 10 to the 8th kilometers. And it's hard to imagine how far that is. So an analogy would be to visualize the distances by taking the huge and gigantic sun compared to the Earth, it's huge, and then lining up a hundred suns like beach balls next to each other to span the distance from the edge of the sun to the Earth. In a hundred suns, we can call this distance the astronomical unit. That is the Earth-Sun distance. So uh, the AU is a great way to to find out relative distance between the planets and in our solar system. And I'm going to help you with that. If we had a scale model of our solar system and we wanted to put it inside of a very large gym, we could scale the Sun-Earth distance, our new AU, down to one meter. And so at that scale, the Sun would be one centimeter across, like a dime. And remember that if you put a hundred of those suns or dimes end to end, you would get 100 centimeters and that would be uh, one meter. And that's our scale. So if you were to continue to walk across the room and look at where all the planets are and to see their relative distance on this scale, you could find a pattern you'd find that the distance as you walk from planet to planet will sort of double, roughly. And um, so we can look at the scale model of the Earth and that makes it easier to help us visualize. And if you get a you, chance on Anchorage, you can start in uh, downtown on the mall on, I believe it's 4th Avenue. You can do the solar walk and walk all the way along the trail to get to the far reaches of the solar system and find out those walking distances. And you'll have to walk far away all the way out to um, Kincaid Park to get to Pluto, the dwarf planet. The nearest stars are about 200,000 astronomical units away. Or continuing in our model, that would be 200 kilometers away from our dime in the gymnasium. So you can get a feel for how much space there is between one star and another. And that's our closest one. It's easier to measure the distances between stars and the time that it takes to travel to them at the speed of light. But we call this distance the light year. And don't let the word year fool you because it really is a distance. We'll learn about many types of light from visible to invisible radio waves or gamma rays and they all travel at the constant speed of light which is a speed in a vacuum 300,000 kilometers per second. And given that speed limit or the law you can convert and find out what the distance of a light year is. So you would do some math, you would take the 300,000 kilometers per second and you would multiply it by 60 seconds in a minute and then that times 60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours in a day and multiply that by 365 days in a year you would get the number of seconds in a year and that would be 9 times 10 to the 12 kilometers per year 9 with 12 zeros after it 9 trillion kilometers so that's very far that light travels in a year. Easier to say one light year. And the distance that light travels in a second can be useful. Uh, sometimes we use that. We can use a light second to calculate the time per um, the distance between the Earth and Moon. We could say that it's since it takes 1.3 seconds, it's 1.3 light seconds distance. And again, eight minutes to the Sun. 
uh, for the light to travel from the sun to the earth. So we could say that the sun is eight light minutes away. And again, 30 minutes for radio or white microwave communication to travel to Mars, depending on the Earth-Mars distance. And so we can see that the light year is useful for measurements of great distances. We can use it to get a sense of the vast distances in our Milky Way galaxy, which has over 300 billion stars in our spiral arm galaxy. Now, those 300 billion stars would be measured at a distance of 100,000 light years across. And our star, the Sun, is located 30,000 light years from the center of the galaxy. So that's about two thirds of the way out on the spiral arm. You can say, you are here. That would be our location in our spiral galaxy. Now, if you look within those 300 billion stars in our galaxy, the nearest one would be 4.3 light years away. Our galaxy is clustered with a group of 50 nearby galaxies called the local group. And the nearest small galaxy is on the other side of, this, of our Milky Way galaxy. So we have to peer through the bright center of it and it's difficult to see with a telescope because it's got so much dusty and light in the center of our galaxy. But it would be located in the direction of the constellation Sagittarius. And that galaxy is 775,000 light years away from the edge of our galaxy. But the nearest large galaxy that we can see, it's a large spiral galaxy like ours, and that is Andromeda or M31. How far away is the Andromeda galaxy? More than 2 million light years. To think how many galaxies are out there and how many stars are in each galaxy. We've detected a network of 100 billion galaxies. To think that we are the only life in the universe given the vast number of galaxies and stars within galaxies and planets around those stars in those galaxies, well, it's very unlikely that we are the only life. But the chance that we'll be able to connect across those vast distances makes it understandable, to me anyway, why we haven't seen life in the universe, at least just yet. So, so I've touched upon the universe of the very large in this unit, in this mini lecture, but I want to make sure that you can go inward and study the ever smaller and smaller units. I'll have some videos and you can read about it in the text. And I want you to really think about why we say that even solid matter, matter the solid matter of an atom is mostly empty space. And that our atoms are far emptier than the solar system to the orbit of Neptune. So that relative distance of the Sun to Neptune is pretty dense when you compare the distance from the center of the nucleus of an atom to the electron cloud spinning around. So please study the cosmic calendar as well for a sense of time scale because it's hard to understand 13.8 billion years. But if we compress that again into a scale factor of a calendar year, it makes it a little bit easier to understand how long the solar system's been around and how long um, life on Earth has been around and how long history has been here. There's much to learn and we've only taken our first steps into the universe. Be sure that you go through the learning module week two and also look at those deadlines for your assignments. Don't forget that you were supposed to do the lab on a separate course shell in Blackboard. And we'll follow the same pattern of assignments each week. Well, I hope you um, enjoy learning about the scales of the universe. Hopefully nothing is too new. But if it is, take some time to read over and... Okay.